What's up, Cokehead? So I really don't know how I found out about this, but did you guys know that Coke was the producer of more than 10 shows in only the span of a year? They even tried reviving two shows just to show you how dedicated they were. Some of their works include Punky Brewster, The Price is Right, a Hulk Hogan animated series, even the real Ghostbusters. And that's the thing, most if not all of these shows were produced by Coke for only one season until they became Columbia Pictures. And what better way to celebrate this short-lived company than by showing you what they had to offer us. And right away, I already see a problem. The first show on this list is Hardcastle and McCormick that ran from 1983 to 1986, but Coke wasn't producing anything until 1987. Regardless, they have a bunch of episodes on YouTube, and I thought, hey, we've been through so many videos together, why not just chill and watch one episode, you know? They're only like, what, 45 minutes? Here, I'll put on episode one for us. E.J. Corlett, big time race car driver. He won about everything you never did. Hey, I even beat him once in a while. Sure you did. E.J. Corlett isn't you, pal. Should have been me. And I'm gonna put you in for felony manslaughter if he dies. You really pick your heroes, kid. Roger, sabotaged your car. You should have won it. One on one? That's right. But I have little to no idea what this show's about. IMDb says one thing, Wikipedia says another, they're drifting cars. All I know is that the car budget for the show must have been outrageous. They bought and customized a McLaren and said, launch it. Punky Brewster's third season was produced by them, and the only reason I know about this show is because on My Name is Earl, they mentioned that this guy was on the show. You know what, Miss, Mr. Stack, have you been drinking? Mr. Stack? No. Okay. That's good enough for me. You have a safe drive home. He was on Punky Brewster, so he's a hero to me. Now, this is not to be confused with any of the spinoffs they made, obviously, because that one came out in 2022. Why would I say that? But I have no idea why Coke was like, Ayo, season three? That's all us, baby? The show had gotten canceled after its second season, and like, what, like, what is, what was comedy in the 80s, bro? Maintain that attitude, and your dance card will be empty at the Bison Bop. The Bison Bop? Yes. That's when we really let down our horns. <laughs> Their next production is actually a good one. They've produced 170 of the Price is Right nighttime episodes. I like how they get a show and they're like, hey, yo, can we get the shittiest part? And then we'll produce everything about it. Now, I don't know the difference between this one and the regular one other than that one was filmed at night. Obvious. So they only aired 170 episodes, which is wild considering that they have over 9,000. But there really isn't anything funny I could say about this other than pretending this had words on it. Their next Marvel of Beauty is another game show called Card Sharks, and I read up how this game was played, and I'm like, I gotta see that for myself. And 
That didn't help at all. And here's how it goes. We're going to start you on the bottom line with $200. You must bet your way across that board by calling high-low. When you get to the second line, we'll add another $400 to your betting money. And you bet your way across the line. Remember, minimum I did find another video of a host who didn't act like he had another game show to be on. And basically, you just guess if the next card you flipped is either higher or lower than the previous one until you reach the top. And it's like, why were game shows in the 80s made for the dumbest of people? I swear to God, game show contestants in the 80s were either stay-at-home moms a programmer or your dad who dropped out of high school to live his dream to be an AC installer. They were the producers of this show called The New Gidget. And as I'm watching this random episode, I notice that all these people have afros, even the white ones. And then I see that all of them have dark faces, even the white ones. Well, I'm sorry, mates, but this episode won't have a happy ending. Now, this next one has to be one of their best works yet. From 1987 to 1988, they produced four seasons and 99 episodes of the real Ghostbusters. Now, I'm not a Ghostbusters fan, so I don't know too much about the show. What I don't understand is how season two aired on September 14th, 1987, but season three aired on September 12th, 1987. And if we look at season four and five, they aired on the same exact day. And then right before season five is something called Slimer, which has 33 segments, but only 13 episodes. And before you nerds berate me, I know who Slimer is, but this doesn't make any sense. Why does season two have 65 episodes and season three has 13? Was season two a fucking banger or what? This next one is actually the coolest looking one to me. It's called Dino Saucers and it only ran for one season, but like the last one, that one season had 65 episodes. I think back then they just kept going until someone said something. They're like, do you want us to cut this up in, you know, like sections so we can have work for more than four months? No, which if you think about it, is pretty impressive. Each of these episodes came out right after another for 65 days straight. Imagine being a kid from September 14th to December 11th, 1987. I, I probably wouldn't even care that my priest is touching me. The 1985 Hulk Hogan Rock and Wrestling special was produced by them, and only the special. I couldn't find any clip of it, so this is just a random episode. This one also had all its dates fucked, like episode 5 and 6 came out on the same day, and then they went back in time to release 7, and they're like, oh my bad, we gotta go back to the 11th to release 8. Keeping track of your favorite cartoon back then must have been a fucking nightmare. But apparently in July of 2015, just four months after the WWE added the show to their network, some weirdos released more of Hulk Hogan's sex tape where he apparently said the N-word, so they fired him. If you don't say the N-word a couple times while you're having sex. Are you really having sex? Coke also started to produce talk shows like the Merv Griffin show, but only the pilot. They brought back the show The Monkeys, but called it New Monkeys. The pilot episode is on YouTube, and if there ever was a show that was fueled by cocaine and nothing else, this was it. It's really hard to tell. I really don't know how I could have been picked out of so many people. Would you like me to look straight into the camera? Or... My name is Dino Kovis. You're just a grocery clerk sent by a bunch of I don't even remember. Yo, a Dean! Dino! A Dean! Yep, yep, just all out now. For all meet me is in Jivoa. Television is even more fun. I watch it nightly. Let me go, baby, and I'll say it! I'll get my girl at that, that's, that's a chicken. Yeah, people are crazy. That's my, that's a quote from me. Just people are crazy. <laughs> oh, man, who put this there? This next one was their attempt to capture a black audience. Or, well, I don't mean okay. It's called That's My Mama, and they only produced season two, and basically it's your classic black sitcom that was only made because of Coca-Cola's previous production, What's Happening Now, which I didn't realize, but the 80s really hit us with the stereotypes. I mean, in episode one, we meet this Australian guy who's known for boxing kangaroos. Kangaroo boxing season? <laughs> yeah, that's how Kangaroo got his name. He's the kangaroo boxing champion of Australia. But enough black people thought that was funny, which I guess got them to make That's My Mama. The second to last production on this list is a cartoon called Starcom, the U.S. Space Force. Apparently it was so bad it got canceled after only 13 episodes, and I'm like, hmm, I wonder why. It was shooting at us, and I don't tinker. You should have gone through the proper channels. Now this last one is probably the most interesting. It's called Sylvanian Families, and it was an animated series about these toys made by a company called Epoch, who's made Japan's first successful programmable console. But that's not even the weird part or it's actually just more interesting. But here's the animated series. Then you got this one called The Stories of Sylvanian Families, which is now done in stop motion. Then you go to Sylvanian Families from 2007 and that shit turned into a whole ass anime. And then to go even further, I found their YouTube channel where they're still uploading videos as of two weeks ago. And what's even crazier than all that, Tara Strong, the voice you all know and love, did her first ever voice role here. And yeah, I found the episode. Whoa, the Woodkeeper's cabin. Maybe he'll lead me to 
to my kind of food. I expect a thank you note to Coca-Cola on behalf of you, Tara. Make sure you mention me. Out of everything that Coke has produced though, none of them have reached the year 2022 like this one has. And hey, this was Tara Strong's debut role. Imagine the TV shows we'd have now if Coke was still a production company. You would have thought that weird McDonald's cartoon was produced by them, but no, they dodged a bullet. But yeah guys, those were all the shows that Coca-Cola had something to do with. See you guys next week. Peace. Are you baking gingerbread?